Hey. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. First of all, I want to say that I don't know how I started off my broadcast with the camera facing me, but I'm going to figure it out so I can do it again. Because <laughs> I've been uh, annoyed by that element of the uh, the way that they do. Uh, hey, what's on? What's going on? I've been annoyed by that part of, uh, you know, Periscope from the beginning, but uh, that is interesting. Drew Betts, what up? Wow, 20 people already. It's interesting. That is very interesting. <laughs> Teach us, Sensei. <laughs> Yo, man, by the way, I checked out that One Punch Man TV show. Man, that drone's dope. Can't front. Super dope. Lit. What's happening? Street M's. Yeah, so um Yeah. Welcome everybody. That's my show. Yeah, that drone was kinda that drone's kinda dope. Yeah, that drone does go hard. Definitely. Um what up, welcome. Uh yeah, share with your followers. Um, let people know. Um, apparently, this is a big topic because there's a lot of people for f less than a minute. Um, what up, what up, what up? Welcome. Um, again, invite your followers. Uh, as, uh, as I'm sure you guys can see, um, this is a big topic. Where's the bride? She is on her way. Thanks for asking. I was just about to uh uh buy bag mm -hmm. drinks. Got you. Um what's it called? Uh Yeah. So yeah, Trish is on her way. She is um on her way back from a studio. She was doing uh her own podcast. Well no, I think she was just checking the studio out. Can't remember. But either way, she was at a studio, she's doing big things, you know what I'm saying? Wifey doing big things. Um, so she's on her way. Um, she might have stopped to get something to eat. I know she was hungry. She wasn't here for dinner. Um, but nevertheless, she's on her way. She'll come in uh, when she gets here. And she will jump right in. Hey, power couple. Hey, thanks. Appreciate it. That's what's up. Salute to your king. Yep. Um, so um, I am starting us off um, just to get the ball rolling. Um, we don't want to be too late. Um, for the sake of, um, you know, for the sake of continuity and consistency, um, we are starting on time. Um, so, um, we are our sexual healing. My name is Daryl. My wife's name is Trish. She will be here later. Um, how often do you do this? We do this every Monday and Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Um, again, we're trying to be consistent. Um, so we have scheduled these things to try to make sure that we are, um, holding ourselves accountable and, you know, giving you guys some consistency so you can schedule your lives because, um, keep me tuned in King. That's what's up. Got you. Um, so yeah, tonight we are going to be talking about, well, before I get to that, what we like to talk about is all things related to sex marriage, dating, God's viewpoint on those things. Um, we like to give advice. We want to help people. Our purpose here is not just to rattle off, you know, philosophical ideas or theology or whatever. We want to make it practical. We want to make sure it helps you. Um, and we want to make sure that you guys are maximizing uh, what God has given you, whether it's your singleness or your sex life or your marriage or whatever, um, and uh, yeah, so um, it's hard to um, deal with those things without this issue coming up, <clears throat> because it's a very common issue, um, it is a very, um, I, I want to say celebrated 
issue, especially in the world when you look at media, masturbation has become like very normal. You know what I'm saying? Like people talk about doing it all the time and it's just kind of like, yeah, you know, I masturbate, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Or we're not masturbating, so on and so forth. Um, hey, what up, boo? <laughs> I was like, who this? I was like, wait, hold up. Who's this complimenting me on, on Periscope? Uh, I'm glad it's my wife. Um, so she is on the scope. <laughs> Until she gets here. Everybody say hi. Hi, wifey. T-Bell, she's in the building. Um... Again, she'll be here in a minute. So, um, so yeah. Um, again, invite your followers. Again, this is a very common topic, a very celebrated topic, and we want to make sure that we are addressing it the best way possible and um, getting this information to as many people as possible so they can get um, so they can get that help, get get freedom. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, so yeah, masturbation, black and white, or is it a gray area? I want to get you guys' thoughts. So uh, you know, first before I start jumping into stuff, so um, I want to hear from y'all. What are y'all's thoughts on black on on masturbation? Is it a black and white issue, or is it a gray issue? Is there like you know, well, I mean, but if it's kind of like this or if it's like that, maybe like what are your thoughts? What does everybody think? Gray. I have one vote for gray. I should have, they need to have a poll thing on here, but still trying to figure it out. That's what's up. I appreciate your honesty. It's probably more gray. I think as far as wet dreams or whatever, it's hard to control. I agree with you on that. We'll get into that more. Um, so many different opinions. Yep. Damaging. Uh-huh. Keep them coming. Any other thoughts? The sturdy people in here. Hard gray leaning towards black and white. Okay. I see you. I see. I see you on that one. <clears throat> Any others? What's your thoughts? What's the What's the temperature in this place? Um, we got a black and white situation or a gray situation. Um, masturbation and that is an act that you choose to make and the thoughts that stem from it. Um, got you. I don't know if that was a complete thought or. Um, can be adulterous. All right, there you go. There's the rest of it. All right, I see you. Any other thoughts? Oh, yeah, keep the hearts coming. We appreciate those. You know what I'm saying? Thoughts on what? Repeat the full question. What are your thoughts on masturbation? Is it a black and white issue or a gray issue? Um, I would say gray. Okay, we got another black and white. We got a gray. <clears throat> it's very interesting uh the the differences in the answers but i'm i'm appreciating it and there's no there's no i want to say there's no wrong answer like i'm not going to judge people for saying whatever they think i'm just trying to get a sense of where people are so um you know so yeah people make it black and white but it's very great when it comes around got you uh huh i think I think it's a gray on the surface, but it's really black and white. Uh-huh, let's get in the word. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, any other thoughts? <clears throat> any other thoughts? Black and white. As a single, but in marriage, is it gray? Yep, let's. <laughs> uh-huh. That's a very, very good ob observation slash question there. Um, and dissection. I like the way you kind of dissected that idea. Um, so, yeah. Um, we are going to talk about... I know some people who say it's bad outside of marriage. When you're married, you do it when you're apart. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah, let's see. And, you know, and again... The reason we do this is because um, very few people actually have dialogue about these things in open public in open public ways, right? Um, specifically as believers, we don't talk about sex, right? Um, when we do talk about it, it's don't touch it till you're married. And if you're married, it's, hey, you can do it all you want now. You're free, right? 
Um, but we don't get into details like is masturbation okay and can we do it and what how does it work and should I not do it when I'm single and do it when I'm married or should I not do it when I'm married or when I'm single but do it when I'm married and how to like all that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> and I think because of that, I mean probably even if we were informed about it, we would have differing opinions and stuff. But I think a lot of times we have different opinions about it because we don't talk about it. Like nobody's ever told you like A, B, and C. So you never thought like, oh, maybe this is wrong or maybe this is right or whatever. You just think what you think because that's what you and your boys thought. You know what I'm saying? So um, so we want to make it normal. I heard a pastor say that God appreciate, appreciate that sin and then being with one you don't belong to. Um, I think I'm trying to understand your statement. What exactly was the pastor saying? Like that, I'm trying to, um, let me correct that. Okay. <laughs> I think you have some spelling, some spelling issues in there. I think I hear Trish coming in. So she's is about to be on and popping. Um, yeah, yeah. Write that one again. Cause you kind of, it kind of lost me a little bit. Looks like there was a couple spelling Spelling errors on it. Um, I think she's taking her coat off first. I'm about to get ready for the for the entrance. It's taking a little longer than I thought. Okay, a lot longer. Um. So, <laughs> um, oh yeah, I'm still waiting for that statement too. Um, yeah, there's not, so again, there's not a lot of talk about masturbation um, in the church. So we want to have a conversation about it. Of course, y'all want to get in the scriptures. Um, now, here's another question for you. Does anybody know any scriptures that talk about masturbation? I'm waiting. <laughs> um, I heard a pastor say that God appreciates that sin. Uh huh. I think Leviticus 11, Leviticus 16. Uh, OT talks about not wasting it. Okay. Um, would, it, would it consider sexual immorality? Only in the context of not fulfilling your brotherly duties. That is true. Um, not in said words. Okay. Trying to look for a verse. Um, then you having sex with a person you don't belong with. Oh, okay. I get what you're saying. So he was saying, the pastor was saying it's better to masturbate than to, you know, have sex with somebody you shouldn't be with. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, guys. They've been waiting for you. Hey. And so was I. I was waiting like this. And then, like, nothing happened. <laughs> Hilarious. So, hey. um, so far I've introed us. I know I've been watching kind of okay. here and there. Bay is here. <laughs> yes, she is. I'm, um, I'm eating. She's gonna I, eat, y'all. I'm so hungry, and I feel like I'm gonna be rude, but I'm sorry. She does this. This is what she does. <laughs> as long as the bag isn't out, we'll be fine. No, I don't. Um, I don't need the bag. Me too. I want some ramen. I'll be right. I'll be right back. Keep going. Sure, I'm back. listening. All right. Yes, the hair is popping. Eve says. Oh, thank you. She says thank you. I think you might have heard her, but I'm not sure. Um. So. Um. So we heard there was a. I think there was a couple references that were made. Uh, Leviticus 16. Um. If I'm correct, that's the one where it talks about. Um. Um, the, you know, Leviticus 15, got you. Um, do you know the verse exactly? I think, I mean, I think I remember it, but, um, it mentioned of semen. Yeah, that's what I figured. It's the, basically this, this passage is about a wet dream. So we're not really talking about masturbation in this one. Um, but it does have some, some kind of, you know, there's some there's some relativity there, but it's not really about masturbation. It's more so about your dream, you're sleeping, you know what I'm saying? You have a wet dream, something like that. 
And then, um, all right, all right, we're on to something with this one. Jesus says something about lusting over and after another woman. All right, so we're going to look into that one in a minute. So hold on. Um, so yeah, every bed on which the one with the discharge shall lie, shall lie, shall be unclean, and everything on which he sits shall be unclean. Hey. <laughs> And That's anyone crazy. who touches his bed shall wash all his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Why do I feel like I feel like I've never read that passage before? <laughs> <laughs> like what? In, in the limelight, and you're an artist when the lights on, spill seeds. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I, I made a reference, but I did that reference so I wouldn't have to say masturbation. <laughs> but. In that passage, I'm not, I mean, that that passage that I referenced doesn't necessarily, yeah, yeah, that's the one we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, that passage doesn't actually talk about masturbation. It actually talks about, um, you know, the brotherly duties that y'all were talking about earlier, or just not clean. Um, is it a sin or just not clean? That's what you're asking. Mm -hmm. It's just not clean, because the Bible also says that a woman who's, you know, on her during that time of the month is unclean and they would just be <laughs> just at, you right yeah they would just be outside of the camp think about this the women back in the old testament this is totally out of the topic but women of the old testament were outside of the camp one quarter of the year That's crazy. because they were on their period for one quarter of the year you know what i'm saying one week for every month like that's crazy Outside the camp. Could you imagine? Unclean. Having to go outside the city to... But, look, but I think this is God's grace though, right? Because some <laughs> sisters, some sisters... Right. Y'all like, y'all got them strong uh, pheromones or hormones or whatever it is that makes all of y'all synchronize your, your cycles. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think God does that so that y'all have community when you're outside the camp. Hmm. That's real. Like, that makes sense. Because, I mean, that's true. Like, normally, you know, if you're around other females, y'all stuff syncs together. And that's crazy. Who mm -hmm. would who thinks like that? Crazy. Yep. So, God's Off gracious. Yeah. God didn't just want to exile sisters. You know what I'm saying? How can you masturbate with pure thoughts? Yeah. I think it's mostly in instant, instant gratification. Yeah, absolutely. That's a very good point. <clears throat> Definitely could relate. Um, so yeah, so being unclean doesn't necessarily make it a sin. I don't think you can intentionally have a wet dream at all. So I don't think that can be a sin. I think it's yeah, just saying it's that. Your, yeah, it's like not, it's not like you're purposely having a dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know you're yeah. having it. But you know, it does make your bed unclean and anybody who touches it unclean and all that kind of stuff. But we don't worry about the clean stuff anymore yeah. necessarily, but you should wash your sheets. Um, so, um, the other passage, all right, so again, we talked about the other passage in Genesis where, um, hello, <laughs> well, watch the sheets. Right, you said it like, <laughs> I mean, it's not like, you just leave it there for like the next week until you do, I mean, hey, I don't know, I'm just hey. saying, it's probably black and white, but I'm holding out for more insight. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Look at the listen. brother with the wisdom. Um, yay, yay for, for hygiene. hygiene. Amen. Yeah, the Old Testament is all about hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, all right. So, um, the passage that he's talking about. One of Judah's, Judah's oldest son, I believe it mm -hmm. is. He gets a prostitute. No, he doesn't get a prostitute. I'm sorry. I might get the story mixed up. There's so many stories in the Old Testament that are so similar. But anyway... Man marries a woman. Ma <laughs> made male pads for teen boys. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, Disgusting, actually. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah. Hopefully, we'll hopefully you we'll need them. We'll <laughs> but if they're masturbating, you probably won't need them. Right. Unfortunately. Um, so, yeah. Man marries a woman. Man dies before he has the first cop. He, before he has the firstborn, right? So the next brother in line is supposed to marry the same woman and raise mm -hmm. up a seed for his brother because that's part of the Jewish uh, tradition. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, whenever the firstborn, whenever the oldest has a firstborn, the firstborn is, have to, is supposed to have the um, the um, birthright 
and all that kind of stuff that comes along with being the firstborn. But if he never has a fourth, <coughs> firstborn or somebody to carry along his name, the, the young, next youngest brother next to Ken is supposed to... Um, Genesis 38. Um, I'm going to look at it. What's in that passage, by the way? Um, I'm going um, to... Oh, also... Genesis um, 38, my reading. Dope, dope, dope. Mm. Oh, Judah, duh. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, he's supposed to raise up a firstborn, but he doesn't. He's having sex with, with his new wife, his brother's now ex-wife, widow, and instead of impregnating her, he pulls out and lets it hit the floor. God immediately smashes the dude, Right. That's crazy. <clears throat> because he was being disobedient. And I think specifically God had intentions for the line of the Messiah. And so he was in, he was even more so offended than he would normally be if it was just some regular old situation. Hmm. Um, but for whatever reason, God decides this dude's life is over. Bring the next to Ken. You that know what I'm crazy. saying? So He ended that man's life like... Yeah, so wow. again, it's not really a masturbation issue. It's a social justice issue. It's not talking about masturbation. It's not really talking about anything like that. Again, I use the term because I was just trying to say, look, um, how can I use biblical I so. terms? Um, David's daughter is Tamar. Oh, I was that know. his daughter? No, t- David came later. That, yeah, not that say. Tamar anyway. He might have a daughter named Tamar, though. Um... So Right, no warning. <laughs> so yeah, I was trying to use biblical terms to describe, you know, mm-hmm. something that, you know, at the time I didn't have the boldness to talk about so freely. So um, how do I talk about masturbation on a Christian hip hop track that I'm going to give to youth groups and stuff? I'm going to use the term spilled seed on the carpet. You know what I'm saying? So um, I knew the context even back then. Yeah. So... um I think so. Jeez, don't know her name. Don't name your daughter Tamar. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, Tamar yeah, especially Baxter? since we know some people named Tamar. Um, the original pullout game. Yep, the original. Um, wouldn't it be a hard issue more than anything? Yes, of course. Everything is always a hard issue. Um, right. Also. Especially considering the passage that we're going to be looking into later on, uh, which is Matthew... Five, verse twenty. Where is it? Blah, twenty-seven. Um. All right. Are we talking about Christian women, ladies? No, we are not. I'm gonna hurt you. But I know you want one. <laughs> Hi, Quan. Long time. Quan, no what up? Um. Um. Uh, my f- one of my fridge or uh, favorite verses books. Yep. You talking about um you talking about Genesis? Is your favorite? If it is, Mm-mm. it's also mine. You I'm awesome. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. How late? He said <laughs> Mr. Tim. Um Oh thank you. I appreciate that. Um laughs it should make It sounds like you, Eddie Murphy, right? Laughs should make you laugh. <laughs> That's what I believe. Um Alright, so I'm gonna read this passage real quick. This is the Matthew five <laughs> 27 um now it says you have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery so the context here is adultery but i say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart that's crazy now it continues right this isn't a new subject he isn't jumping and changing his mind about something he's uh, we need to do a Christian hip hop Uber driver scope together. Hey, That's I'm down. Um, oh, by the way, the Uber drivers were were protesting today in uh, in New York because they just dropped the fares. So, um, so yeah, it was interesting day. Um, <clears throat> so I didn't drive for Uber today. Um, anyway, back to the passage. If your right eye, again, this is the continuation. This is still the same context, right? If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away for it is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away for it is better for you to lose one of your members than for your than that your whole body be, go into hell. 
So, or left. Right. <laughs> I know, but who you... No, I'm just playing. Um, so, cut off your fingers. Um, again, the whole point isn't... Let's, Literally. Let's cut your fingers off and stuff. Even though I do believe there was one old saint. Seth might know who I'm talking about because I can't remember names. Um, my history is bad. I've never been good with history. Um, what? I mean, I know Bible history. Right. Of, I was like, what are you talking but about? As far as like actual history, like church history outside oh, of the okay. Bible. That's different. Um, there's, I believe there's one believer who's like a celebrated theologian, maybe, who did either pluck out an eye or something like that. He had plucked out his actual eye? Yes. I believe so. Oh, Lord. Yes, I love it too. Isn't it? Isn't it great? <laughs> Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> oh, Look at this. Dang. Look at this gorgeousness. Um, so, yeah. I believe it happened. Thank Seth, you, I don't buddy. know if you know, but I, be- I do believe I heard about it. Um, He's talking about Van Gogh. You're saying Van Gogh? No, nah, he cut off but, his yeah, ear. But I'm, that talking was, about, he I'm talking about a dude, I'm talking about a dude who plucked his eye out. So... Um, so again, the context is adultery. (laughs) Um, now I could be wrong. Um, so what does dude do when he wakes up and sees his involuntary reaction? Sit on his hands and, um, sit on his hands and let him what? Yes. Betty Wop. What? Oh. Yeah. Plug his ass. (laughs) You ain't right. (laughs) That is so wrong. It was, he was born like that. That's like a. A defect. I didn't know. Yeah. I've never looked at Fetty Wap for more than two seconds. Um, His eye looks crazy, though. Sorry. Look, we're so... I'm sorry. So, I, yeah. Um, so, again, the context is adultery. Eva slash had a lust. question. Oh, who? That was, I think it was Eva. Yeah, yeah. I missed the last part of it. She was saying, like, what when is, he wakes oh, up. Oh, when he wakes up after, mm-hmm. met, you know, <clears throat> wet dream or whatever. What is supposed to happen? Please? Yeah, like I said, I think, I mean, just wash your sheets. I don't know what else to add to that. Yeah. Again, I don't think it's like a voluntary type of you need to repent kind of thing. I think it's just a, you know, it's like a release valve or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, again, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know all the physiology of it, but, you know, it's. There okay, a lot more people than I thought have plucked their own eye out. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> uh wet dreams usually happen when semen is stored up and needs to be released. Exactly. Um so yeah. So it just kinda comes out when this it needs something to something I did. I'm you y'all see I'm quiet because I, I mean mm-hmm. And again I think it's right next to can't think of the theologian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Um if you can then I don't know who can. Um but yeah. It's in the same path in Leviticus. It's in the passage, probably right next to all the stuff about women and their periods. So the idea is that both men and women have these things that happen that are involuntary, um, and they're part of uh, their reproductive organs, and they're unclean. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean it's a sin. It just means that the things are dirty. You know what I'm saying? So um, there's a lot of Sorry, yeah, there's a lot of dirty stuff in the period. There's a lot of I don't know what's so dirty in the in the you know semen necessarily, but um, you know it's unclean in the Bible. So where's the line between this is biological and this is this is sin? I think um, again, I think when you when you're talking about sin, you're talking about intention. At least to me, you are um, to an extent. I will say. I think if you kill somebody, you kill somebody. I don't. I think that if you don't mean to kill somebody, <laughs> um, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Then it's then it's not necessarily a sin. Like it's not like you intentionally like you know accident. whatever, you know. So I mean, yeah. there might be some depending on the nature of the accident. There might be some sin in you know your carelessness. You know what I'm saying. Like you hit somebody in a car, or you know um, you forgot to lock. You know, something or, you know, something like that. Waves to the Dominican chick from D.C. <laughs> He's talking about uh, Eva. Oh, I was like, what? Um, yeah. You are Dominican, right? I could have swore. Yeah. Anyways. Um, Sad face. <laughs> um, no. She's like, no. I was about to say, I don't think she is. Wait a minute. Panamanian? Panama? 
No, you just. Yeah, make us make us stop guessing. Right. Just give us the truth. <laughs> um, but I was gonna say too, like, don't isn't it like if you're like really like taking in a lot of um, like you know porn or whatever things that you shouldn't be looking at or thinking about, doesn't that bring on wet dreams as well? Because I thought. Um, I thought he, he, she is not hilarious. There is a verse in the Bible that tells us that our body is not our own. Yes, that is true. Um, no, that doesn't. It doesn't cause wet um, dreams. I, yeah, I, don't think I, don't know. I, I feel like I mean I don't know. Like I don't like women get it too. So it's not just men. Women get it as well. Um, yeah, that's a whole another topic. But um, but yeah. So I because I feel like if you're Constantly, I struggle with it, so I know too much. So you're saying it's not what dreams happen when you don't masturbate? Lol. So like, yes, yeah, so your brain triggers pornographic images. Said right, that's exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Got you. Because I, I know, I know that it's possible to to have that. Like it's like if you're ingesting things that you should not be doing, then that type of stuff can happen. So. Mm-hmm. Got you. So, In that sense, then I would say repent. Right. Because like, <laughs> if that's oh, I why, was watching or looking at something. If you are married, then your body belongs to your spouse. Yep, that exactly. is correct. Um, so yeah, if, you're, if you've been taking in porn and other things that you're lusting about, yes, I believe lust will bring about wet dreams or attacks from the enemy if you're transitioning to continue. And masturbation goes against that right. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, so yeah. Um, if you're, if you're having wet dreams because of your lust, then yeah, I would say that that's a, that's an issue. I think, um, but again, though, I don't think the, the involuntary, um, ejaculation in your sleep is the, re- is the sin it's as much as, morality. yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Absolutely. Yep. As much as the, in the original intake of lustful exactly. content you know what i'm saying yeah. so that's, that's true the intrusive it changes the way you think and, and feel mm-hmm. Amen, louis. yeah i agree with you louis i mean you know i know that a lot of times when i've um have felt the enemy attacking me in my sleep it has been because of that transition and it it like that would be the only time that i've ever experienced like um spiritual warfare like that like it's it, like not the only time but like one of the heaviest times has been in my sleep um and it's been because of that so you know it's true like that's that's definitely you're transitioning from what from you're moving from sexual immorality to you know got you got you okay yep so what else were we talking about I forgot. We got all kinds of off. Um, Sorry. We went down multiple. Your body needs to release semen at least once a month to a half month. So releasing semen is unavoidable. Oh, wow. See, these are, this is a, that's interesting. Where, where, are you a professor? <laughs> like, how do you know these things? Yes, tell us. What are, what, are, what is your background? How do you know these things? Just to, just so other people know where you're getting this. I know a lot because I struggle with it. Got you. Got you. Um, yeah, so. Um, we have we haven't actually research, talked about research and research. Got you. Like, are you getting to the black and white gray situation? All right. Yeah. I mean, there's so there's there's a lot to talk about with this topic. There's a couple other things. People also use it as an uh, use it to escape reality. Lol. Yep. Um, yes, they do. Um, wait. What are we you're talking saying about? masturbation? Yes. It's, oh, okay. I was like, wait. Use what? Reality That's sucks, a- though. Yes, it does okay. sometimes. Um, yes. Um, so we, um, so there's the topic of just masturbation in and of itself. Now, I think it's pretty black and white when you're talking about it as a single person in general, right? Um, you know, you're looking at somebody that you're lusting after, um, whether it's a real person, is it okay to masturbate when you're having sex with your spouse? Now, this is what we were going to get to eventually, and it has come up, so we are going to get to it soon. Um, so, yo, yeah. don't do it. Hilarious. Um, so, yes, if you're single, don't touch it. Shouldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? 
stop looking at people. C, if your habit slows you slows down when you stop with the porn books already filmed. Oh, she's saying C, if your habit slows down when you stop. Gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. Um, I think it's pretty obvious for single folks. Yeah, you shouldn't be doing it. You shouldn't be watching porn. Um, but I think it gets weird when you, when you, not weird, but it gets kind of like kind of grayish when you're dealing with married folks because of the question you just saw. Is it okay if you're married to do it for your spouse? Um, or, um, I've been reading some stuff. There's also some people who think it's okay. Um, yo, Steven, sometimes it's a struggle for young men, especially single men. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. A lot of times it is actually. Mm -hmm. Um, porn is everywhere when you're not looking for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely it is. It's on television. It's on uh, the phone of the person sitting next to you on the airplane. Mm -hmm. It is on Facebook. It's on Instagram. It's you're scrolling everywhere. through your stuff. You do the search button and then all of a sudden random stuff pops up. Everywhere. Um, you know what I'm saying? Sex sells. Yes, it does. Because sex makes you remember things. You know what I'm saying? That's so, Louis' boyfriend, by the way. Oh, who is? Uh, it's in your mind from I old vids years name. ago. Yep, yeah. social media is the most. Yep, Nikki true Sage. that. The marriage bed is open. If significant others watch mm -hmm. you, then hey. Um, hey, hey, that's what's up. Mm -hmm. um, it's the struggle of every teen male. Yep. Pretty mass radio where you can invite people. Got you, yep. I missed it. He's saying you can bring other people into your bed. I remember why oh, I was just okay. in case of COVID. Okay, yeah. That was a lot of comments. I think yeah, I got all of it. Um, but yeah, one person said they remove all the apps that bring that kind of stuff to the table. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Do what you got to do. Pluck out your right eye. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, one person was saying that, you know, watching porn is a way of bringing other people into your marriage bed. Um, so you want to avoid that. Um, yeah. I definitely agree. You don't want other people in the bed with you. Um, no. You know what I'm saying? Mentally speaking. No. Um... Or physically speaking. Absolutely you not. You gotta put that speaking. out there because some people... Some people don't know. But for Mary folk, what is the gray area again? Oh, yeah. So, the part where it's... It's not necessarily gray, but it is kind of gray. Um, Especially, I think, for a single person who is like... Who wants to get married and maybe struggle with masturbation. Thinking about there being a freedom to possibly do it in marriage... With their spouses, like, huh? I don't know about that. Like, that sounds weird. Mm -hmm. However. Yeah, however. So, there's differing thoughts about it. Um, some people, so, I was reading some stuff. There's some people that think that being single um, and masturbating is actually, it got really dark. So, sorry. It, the light <laughs> is, like, killing my eye and I have a headache. Okay. Um, so. <clears throat> sorry. sorry. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm sorry. It's kind of. My bad, we gotta, guys. We gotta figure out something else. Go this ahead. Like, no, you can leave it. Like it's fine. Third, this is like the third week. He was like, "No, the lighting is so bad." Yeah, never mind. Forget about it. Um, <laughs> an internet filter on your phone and computer. Oh, okay. Yep, they got those. They exist. Um, yep, do that one. It's further away. Softer light. What up, Miss Drysdale? Um, hey, single Janelle. and masturbating is a sin. Uh, it's like Pictionary. Um, no, Simple. Um, that's yeah, better. Yes. I was struggling. <clears throat> so, plus, all right, so this is the issue with masturbation when you're single, right? Not only is it just a sin, but when you're preparing yourself for masturbation, when you're preparing yourself for marriage, you're preparing yourself, if you're masturbating, for this selfish, self-indulgent, um... Shorter um, version of what sex is. You know what I'm saying? So instead of it being this thing that is for another person, um, that involves another person, mm -hmm. like another real person, um, and, you know, is about somebody else other than just yourself and your own orgasm. Um, it becomes this thing where like, oh, you just do what you need to do in order to get yours. Right. And then, you know, your brain responds with dopamines and oxytocin and all kinds of good feelings and stuff like that. And you train yourself into thinking like, oh, this is all I need to do. Mm -hmm. And so once you finally get married, do you think it's okay a married man to masturbate if the wife is pregnant? 
Absolutely not. No, I'm like. She's... And we so can can you be clear about what what you're saying when you say married like the it mm. it possibly being okay to masturbate. I'm gonna get to it. Okay, I'm trying um, to I'm trying to get the single okay. stuff out the way. Because I think like, they're I think I think it's I know, already they're confusing. Like, they're, yeah, they're, they're already kind of. How do you release even healthy healthily then as a single waiting for wet dreams is irritating. <laughs> oh, you just gotta be patient, bruh. I'm sorry. Can't help you with that one. You just gotta let God do it. let nature do its thing. Okay, bruh? Um, don't interrupt the process. Women don't women don't try to jump the gun on their period, so you know what I mean? Wet dreams trigger porn memories. Exactly. Um, I would. I mean, I would. Seminal emissions. And I would. I would also really ask the Lord to like, because this is something that I struggle with. So I'm just. I'm just gonna put it out there. But um, really praying and asking the Lord to like, um, really just purify your mind and 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 make your dreams like, like good, godly, like pure dreams. Because and it, I mean that's a real prayer to pray. Like I've. I have been there, brother. Like, and I'm a woman, so I I totally understand. Um, so you have to, you really have to be in prayer, like really, um, and and ask the Lord to like, just tr- transform those dreams into something that He's pleased with, so that you're not going through, you know, through that all the time. God makes your soul new. Why can't He make your mind exactly? He can renew your mind, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you have to pray that those specific. You know, there's passages that talk about renewing renewing your mind and really praying that um, to God and asking him to change it. Because, I mean, literally, I would wake up in the middle of the night struggling and I'd have to pray. Like, I'd have to pray. Like, go in <laughs> on some, like, meditate on the word. Absolutely. You have to renew your mind. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, um, you might, it might be a lot of work, you know. Yeah, the dreams are really vivid in my mind the rest of the day. Yeah, you got to pray. Like for real, I think I think the Lord allows things like that to happen so that we can, you know, be constantly in prayer and asking Him to transform and renew our minds. Porn screws up the vision of your wife. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Um. So again, like being single and masturbating, you turn into this selfish sexual thing, and it totally does not prepare you for Absolutely, marriage. Absolutely, but um. So masturbation is wrong whether single. Well, well we're getting there. <laughs> Um, so, but when you're married, so when you're married, after you've been masturbating as a single person, right? So we're still talking about single masturbating, right? Um, like you're not prepared for the idea of you hit the, you hit the, hit it on the head. Yep. By the time you get married, you don't last as long in bed. Um, you're still selfish because you haven't been trained to think unselfishly in marriage because who else are you trying to please other than yourself, right? (laughs) Gotta pray just to make it today. Yep. Um, and, uh, I feel like there was a third, but I don't know if it's there, but, but it's just a sin. You're just not setting yourself up right. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to kill it when you're married, you need to abstain now. Because you want to make sure that you are programming your mind for selfless pleasure with somebody else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've been too selfish lately. Yep. Listen, um, you don't think that ma- getting married is going to change that. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. if you if you struggle and you're in and you're in like you're constantly like struggling with the sin of masturbating, like it's not. What if it's too late? What do you mean? What if it's too late? What if you've been what if you've been masturbating all the time that you've been single and now you're married and now you come to the bedroom with selfish and um with selfish intentions and you don't last long in bed and all kinds of other stuff, yeah. right? What do you do now? Seeking counsel is a great idea. Um again, I always tell people, look, go to the gospel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the gospel teaches us specifically brothers that we are supposed to sacrifice for the sake of yeah. of of our spouse. You know what I'm saying? So, it, um, sorry, go ahead. Be transparent with you, brother. Yep. Um, accountability. Yep, that helps too. Um, it really comes down to unbelief in God's design, not believing you can hold out by His grace. Yeah, uh-huh. and self control. Self control is the fruit of the spirit. Like, if you if you are a child of God, you're walking with Jesus. You know Him. 
his spirit is in you and you have the ability to be self-controlled. You have it. You have it. <laughs> right. You have self-control. You have it. It's already in you. Mm-hmm. So you just have to utilize it, Flex right? It. Exactly. Work it out. And 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 it's not just a like, oh, I'm just I'm gonna just sit here and wait for God to just renew my mind. Like, no, you gotta put like you gotta put your hands to the plow and be praying and and seeking the Lord, seeking passages and memorizing scripture and all of that control, not just the exactly. Yes, we do, but we love our sins too much, so we entertain it. Exactly. 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 You gotta, man, put that mess to death. Like literally, die to your flesh. Die. Like do- death is is like imagine Jesus on the cross dying, like getting totally smashed. Like that's what we have to do with our sin. Like straight up. Um Let the dog returns to his vomit. Exactly. Uh, we have the power to fight the flesh. Yep. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Go so ahead. Yeah. We still haven't gotten to this. So, again, <laughs> how can you tell before marriage if your guy will be a selfish lover because he you is can't. no so You won't know. You There's can't. no way. Yeah, you can't. You won't know until you get married. Unless because, y'all screwing before y'all get married. That's yeah, it. Yeah, but, you know, but you don't want to do that. Right. So. I'm sorry. I just had to keep it real. Like, you're not going to know. You just won't know. Nope. Um, but if he's watching porn now, chances are he will mm, be. Absolutely. And plus, aren't we all selfish normally anyway? You know what I'm saying? I think when you come to the marriage bed, <laughs> um, like you, you have to come to it with the mentality yes, of, I'm going to please my spouse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to model the gospel. I'm going to die to myself and I'll make sure that they get theirs. You know what I'm saying? Um... And I think sex is just meant to be better if you think that way. So it is. I mean, it's it is you serving one another, literally. Mm-hmm. Like you're serving your spouse the way you would. You know, the say it's the same concept of like serving others, right? It's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. It's not just about oh, okay, I'm about to have sex and I'm just doing this because it's my husband and I gotta just yeah, do, do it that. just to be doing it, but. Remind me in case we forget. They want to pray for people who are struggling with oh, yeah, absolutely. And stuff. Absolutely. Um, but it is it is an act of service. Like it is you being a servant to your husband mm-hmm. or a servant to your wife. And it doesn't have to start when you get married. Exactly. You can start serving by maintaining your sexuality, by not masturbating, by not watching porn, and by not doing things selfishly. At this point in your in your singleness, you know what I'm saying. So start preparing yourselves now, and start you know training your mind for uh for for marriage by thinking unselfishly. So all right, so we talked about being single and masturbating. Now we're going to talk about being married and masturbating. Elizabeth Elizabeth talks about it on on this and making of a man. Great read. Okay, that's what's up. Hmm. Be self selfless, not selfish. Exactly. A to the men. Um. All right, so there's differing thoughts about masturbation within the context of marriage. Um, there are some who would say that it is okay if your spouse gives you permission to go off on your own and masturbate. I disagree, obviously. That's um, so that's to me, I think that's I think that's a way out. I think you're trying to find a way out. The other person wants some. You're you don't feel like it because you're tired. You just like you know, go ahead and just go masturbate. I don't feel like giving it up right now. Plain. So, not okay. Um, again, right. again, you're you're training them for selfishness again. You know what I'm saying? You are setting them up for I want to get mine. I got mine, and it didn't take all that work. I didn't have to romance her. I didn't have to clean up the house first. I didn't have right. to. You know, I didn't have to say nice things. I didn't have to try to avoid a fight before we got it in. Like, I didn't have to do all that. I just went into the room. I thought some crazy thoughts. And then it was on and popping. And then I was over and I'm out happy and I feel good. You know what I'm saying? And that's not the way it's supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? Um, That's not, didn't have to shower. (laughs) You know, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Um, You know, you become on the flesh as scripture say. Yep. Um, so yeah, so yeah, one flesh, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you just became one flesh with yourself, you know what I'm saying? And it's not cool. 
Um, I, I've heard some women can't orgasm through sex. They so they masturbate with their spouse. That's interesting. Um, I don't know what to say about that though. Yeah, yeah. I think. So I think. Yeah, I'm not sure how to feel about that either necessarily. I think. I think so. All right. So again, so this is the other thing, right? Some say it's okay to let the spouse masturbate on their own. We disagree. Some say. What if you do it for your spouse or with your spouse, right? Um, I think that's where it becomes a little bit more gray. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it's actually during the sex act and, you know what I'm saying, and you're both involved in the process, I think that's a little bit more acceptable. Um, I think it becomes more difficult when it's like, okay, I'm out of town. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what if we watch, you know what I'm saying? Um, if we did, like, a video chat or something like that, like... Like, is that okay? You know what I'm saying? I think that becomes a little bit more questionable and muddy. You know what I'm saying? Um, Because the other person's involved, but they're not there. So how, you know what I'm saying? Um, What covers the envelope of immorality? So what covers the envelope of immorality? Um, That's a great question. I wish I knew exactly what the question meant. Um, communication with your wife is key in the bedroom. Don't exactly. be shy to take directions. Exactly. exactly. Now that's the other thing I was gonna say about the idea of the woman who doesn't get a doesn't have an orgasm. Part of me is like, is, is he, he is he actually asking what she wants in the bedroom or not? Because um like what biblically is considered sexual immorality. Got you. Um I think in general anything outside of marriage is sin. Um, and anything that is outside of, like... He talks about that. Yeah, I mean, there's a litany of things that are outside of marriage with your, you know, opposite sex spouse. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that kind of fit fit that list. You know what I'm saying? So... He's asking what they are. Yeah, so, you know, other people, other animals, other items, (laughs) um... You know what I'm saying? Yourself. But does it cover in for in marriage too? Um, ask that question in a, uh, in a kind of more thorough way. Um, eight years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've been married eight years. Um, so, yeah. So, again, when you're inside of marriage, um, anything that deviates from God's design of sexuality is immorality. Exactly. Yep. Anything outside of that. Hmm, what do you do when your wife is going through pregnancy? Have sex. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm you like, can it's... have sex when you're pregnant. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Like, I think when after you have the baby, that's when... And you be sexually immoral with the, in the marriage covenant. Um, I don't... I mean... If it's sexually immoral, period. Then yeah, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to... I didn't know you could. Dang, I've been told wrong. What? You can't. Probably. You didn't know you could have sex when when the woman was pregnant. Listen to me here now, okay? That actually helps have contractions. Are you sick? Oh, that's sad. I'm so, I just. I'm sorry. See, this is why we do this because there's <laughs> like, all kinds. Of, there's all kinds of misinformation out there. Listen. You know what I'm saying? After the baby, now that's you can't. I'd be afraid, honestly. I don't want to mess up nothing. No, you can't no. Mess listen, that baby, look, the this, baby is in look, the womb. And this is what I'm saying too. Bad biology, like in the womb. Like there's all kinds of cultural sayings and stuff like that that are just totally <laughs> off. Like, oh, you gonna hit the baby in the head? Lies. No, you aren't. Lies upon lies no, upon lies. Aren't. Okay. Like, no, you aren't. Get freed up today, guys. Okay. You may have sex with your wife while she is pregnant. Mm-hmm. Okay, all the way up until she about to have a baby. Uh, yo, Steven, I've been blessed by you tremendously. The baby hey. is well protected. That's right. I've never had a sex ed class, so I've had to do tons of research. Oh, tons. True that they Look, have. Said I, that I applaud time. you for researching. Once you just got married, how, how quickly, quickly do you have sex? The, I mean, the night of. What you mean? I mean, I don't know. Are you? You're really as serious. As soon as you can. <laughs> I'm like, you serious? I mean, I made sure the wedding was short. We didn't want to stay That too wedding long. was still long as jack. I know, we tried. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Skip the reception. Hey, if you want to do that. I can't skip. The, the bride's not going to skip, skip the reception. Skip the reception. Do what you want to do. Gotta... Come back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, y'all, y'all can do the wardrobe I, change I, thing if you I want. I think Rebecca had sex the moment they saw each other. 
hilarious. Y'all crazy. Home oh, Jesus is hilarious. Wait, did this they? Or did they? I thought they were just kissing. I thought he kissed her. I don't know. I lost, lost your audio. audio. Yeah, does everybody else still hear us? They, um, went, they into went into the, the tent. tent. Hey. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. I think they had one of those arranged marriages. <laughs> I hear you. That's what's up. And he made her his yeah, wife. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yep. All right, cool. Um. So, yeah. Um. Like um, I said, I think as long as the two people are both involved in the process, um, then... If they're in agreement. If they're both in agreement and they're like, you know, okay, while we're together... You know, in the acts, and you know, if they're okay with that, then you know, it's it's not sin. <laughs> it's not sin. But I think for some, I think for people who have struggled with it, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit difficult to like accept or you know mm-hmm. be okay with. But yeah. it's not like... sinful if it's it's you and your spouse together. Like I don't, I think because if we're talking about. You know, oh, I'm off over here, and you on another. Is you know, it like a hand job, a uh, natural act. This is like a hand job. A what do you mean act. by it? But for real though, my husband and I take masturbation seriously as, we, as if we were cheating if we do it while we were. Oh yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. definitely, it is. I mm-hmm. mean, straight up and down, it is. That's what I'm saying. Like you, you doing it by yourself without your spouse. That's a whole different situation. Yeah. Like now we, now we talking about. It's been a while. I don't now know. We'll, we'll see what happens, but we have we have plans, but we'll see what happens. So sorry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't. We don't recommend that at all. I mean, um, and I, again, it's your personal preference as long as it is. Why are you masturbating when you have a spouse to have sex? Well, right. I mean, that's how I feel about the situation. Mm-hmm. Like if you're uh, to your hand job is that a natural act? It just seems off. I think no. I think is no. That's perfectly. That's yeah, it's perfectly, perfectly normal, normal <laughs> and totally fine. I mean, um, come on. <laughs> I feel how you. can we pray for you? Uh, um. Oh, how you, can you pray for us? Um. Oh. Good question. Um. Ooh. This. Um. Let's see. So I would say. Um. There it's, almost are, like, it's almost like saying your spouse is not enough or something. Yeah. Yeah. Not necessarily. I think, I think, so, all right, we'll, we'll talk about prayer yes. items in a minute. Yes. Um, we'll talk about them before we actually, yeah, you can definitely yes, pray for definitely. that. Pray for Epiphany that. BK. Um, so the, the bedroom, like the married person's or married people's bedroom, um, is a place of variety. So... Um, the idea of having somebody else, you, you know, do a a hand job, so to speak, um, is totally normal. It's just, I think whenever the other person is touching you, period, it's exciting. You know what I'm saying? So, um. Are you, are you, you're not married, I assume. Yeah, part of me is assuming too. So, um, so yeah, I, I think. No, okay. Yeah, so. Of course, you know what I'm saying, there's there's levels, so to speak, you know what I'm saying, there's certain things that are more pleasurable than others, you know what I'm saying, some things are good for foreplay, some things are like, ah, you know what I'm saying, I'd rather you do it this way, you know what I'm saying, so, um, but it's all part of, you know, the, the big picture, you know what I'm saying, which is the, the wide variety of things that we are free to do in Christ while we're in the bedroom yeah. with our spouse. So, and I, um, I was going to say too, I think that because we've been so bound in, 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 you know, lit, what books are you both reading, man? Genesis. Yeah. Right now we're both in Genesis. Um, I'm, I've started to read a book by Paul Tripp. Um, it's called relationships is a mess worth making. A mess, yep. A mess worth making. Um, yeah. So, but I was going to say too, that because we've been so bound for so long and living in sin and just wallowing in it, um, once we're married, like once we like start walking with Jesus and then we get married and you know, we, we understand that <laughs> we understand that there's all these freedoms in marriage, you know, the marriage covenant, we like, it's very difficult to be free in and enjoy 
what God has given us, right? And so we kind of like get caught up in like, oh, am I allowed to do that? Can I do that? I don't know if that's okay. I don't, you know, it's like, it's almost like, man, like that's like, yo, dude, there's not a lot of limits to this thing. You're, you are married. You have the freedom to enjoy one another, enjoy his body is mine and my body is his. So explore all you want, you know, and you have to experiment and, you know, of course, make sure that your spouse is on point with, you know, y'all are on the same page. Yes, exactly. Y'all on the same page. So you could talk through sex. Exactly. So, you know, it, it could be a conversation before you even get, get into having sex when married, that is exactly, um, you know, when you're married, you, you know, even the, the night up, right. Your honeymoon, you could be like, Hey babe, like, I just need to know what I can and can't do. Like, it's good to just have the conversation. So it's between the husband and wife to determine what's cool and not. Yes, exactly. exactly. And and as long as it's, you know, nothing sexually immoral, like, you know, bestiality and all this experiment, and, like, no, like stuff that ain't natural. Um, the scripture talks about praying before you come together. Yeah, send us that passage. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know if I know oh, that Oh, if you're one. talking about 1 Corinthians, then... Yeah, if you're talking about like <laughs> yes. fasting, you know what I'm saying? Fasting, you know what I'm saying? Fast pray, whatever, for a certain amount of time if you're going to be apart. And then once you're done, come together. Yeah, so, yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. Um, I'm single and I would like to get married, so I'm learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so it's good, I mean, it's good to have those open conversations to like really understand. Did y'all attend pre-marriage counseling? Yes, we yes. did. We absolutely did. That must be a little awkward to bring up. No, it's not awkward. Like when you marry... You want to make sure everything is good. Like, um, not going to try anything until I'm like, amen. Don't. Please don't. Mm, um, it's beautiful to pray afterwards also. Look, that's the and that's the beauty of marriage. Like, you can pray before, during, during and after. after. Listen, you know what I'm saying? Like, it is worship. It is an act of worship. Like, unto the Lord. Like, like it's, it literally is like a, you and your spouse coming together. It's like, that's a ministry. That's ministry. Like we're, we're here. We're one, like we are one and we're like doing the physical, you know, um, picture of the oneness. That's some, that's some very That's poetry. That's deep. Yes. Um, no, it is not wrong to not want to hear gospel songs in the bedroom. That Sex is, not- is amazing. It is a great thing. And God created it. God created sex. He created it for His us first, to enjoy. God's first commandment was go have sex and make babies. Like. Come on, son. That And we, that's, that's why we're here, y'all. We want y'all to get freed up to know that it is, it is a good thing. Like when you get married like, all that stuff that you, like, as singles, like, how you're thinking right now, you're like, oh, man, like, this is just weird. It might be awkward. Listen, I understand. I understand, like, feeling that way. But, like, once you're married, all of that goes away. I mean, not all of it right away, but it's like, I don't mm-hmm. understand why a lot of Christians stay away from this topic. Because they don't, they have not gotten freed up themselves. The devil just perverted sex. Nothing is wrong with it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. exactly. The world, I mean, the enemy has used the world to like... Pre-marriage counseling allows the church to say yes and amen to your union. Exactly. 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 Look, I want to do a whole scope on premarital stuff just because... We, we have to. Um, no, you know what? We should we should do that in our, our online. We're going to actually do a, um, a webinar soon. I don't know if you guys would be interested, but I want to get a poll... Maybe I should do an official poll to see what kind of topics that you guys really want um, us to talk about, like, more in depth. Um, you would love that. Dope, dope. So, you you know, premarital stuff like courtship and, you know, all of these things. I mean, these are topics that we talk about on, on a regular, but we really like to hear stuff. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You had that Trinidad gal. I, I hear you. Um, so, y'all, so, was y'all first time after the union? Hope that's not too personal. I'm in marriage preparation and yes. Um, our mm-hmm. first time have together or in general? Having sex, is that what you're talking about? I get nervous thinking about the first time. Yeah. I mean that's normal. Yeah. That's normal. There's some nervousness, there's some excitement present. Absolutely. You better Romans twelve. Yes, yes, Drew. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. That is uh, such a fitting passage. 
Me and Louis courtship in the beginning. Got you. You're saying something else. Daryl, do you do mentor young men? Um, I don't yet right now because I just moved to New York. Um, but I have mentored brothers you know, when we were in Philly. So, um, yes was the first time y'all slept together after marriage. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. How long did you guys date before marriage? A, A year, year and nine, nine days. days. <laughs> um, somebody asked something that I was going to answer and I totally forgot. Um, oh, I didn't, I missed it. Oh, you're in NYC now. Wow. Yep. Yeah. My church has also free engagement. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's we just, good. We actually, we just changed the name of ours to pre-engagement at Epiphany. Yeah. I've been saying we need to do it for a minute. Oh, eight, like, years. eight years. Eight years. I've been saying we need to do it for a minute because we do try to hit people up before they get engaged. Listen. Because Pastor E specifically, his policy is he doesn't counsel engaged folk because they don't pay attention. And they, they're yeah. already ready to walk down the aisle. It's mm-hmm. like, what's the point of y'all getting they having this premarital they counseling? Done, you didn't pay, put down payments on stuff. Set like, dates, told people. You know what I'm saying? What's y'all take on single believers dating? dating. Um... I think it's dope. We did. I won't forget. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, like yeah. date with in, intention. Like that's that's the thing. Like don't just be dating to be dating. You know, do you discuss sex stuff? What was it? He was asking if we wait until marriage to talk to talk about sex, and I would say no. I would say that there's a limit on the kind of stuff as it relates to sex that you can talk about, but. I wouldn't say let's wait till we were married to talk about sex stuff. I think they need to know going in that, look, I've had other partners in the past and yeah. or I've been addicted to porn or, you know, there's certain things yeah. that they need to know about you before they go into the relationship. Yeah, definitely. Um, you don't you mean, want them going in blind like and then finding out later on, oh, by the way, I've been raped. My dad molested me. And, you know, I used to date, you know, I used to be gay and you know, like they don't yeah, need to. You need to, you need to. They need to know all that stuff before they get into the relationship. Um, not, but not specific. Hey, babe, I'm into this. Stuff. No, no, no. Yeah, no, they don't need to. Don't, hear, no, you don't need to hear all that type of stuff. Because no, no. the last thing, especially for a dude, the last thing he needs is a visual of you getting this this stuff that you know you're into. Don't you know what I'm that. saying? So, because he will think about it, he's going to imagine it, and he can't stop himself. So he needs to not think about those kind of things. Oh yeah, babe, I'm into this kind of stuff, and you need to do it like this. Wait until Mike Hanky and plays a B three organ. <laughs> <That's> so silly. <laughs> uh huh. That's so, when it becomes tempting. Exactly. Exactly. Whenever there's visuals involved, stop. You know what I'm saying? That's the rule of thumb, especially for dudes. Even when you're talking about past relationships. When there, when visuals get, limit. don't put a limit. Stop. You gotta put a you know limit what to what you're talking about. I was with about. this dude. I was in a relationship for this long, or I was with a number of dudes. You don't even have to give the number. Oh, praise a God. lot of dudes don't even need to know. You know what I'm saying? But you know, we don't need no visuals. No, nah, that's too much. Every everything that she told me about that was a little bit too visual, I still remember. You know what I'm saying? And those things are still a temptation for me at the wrong times. When so, visuals get involved, stop. True, exactly. Yeah. yeah so. Mm-hmm. And we don't want y'all to make mistakes that we made too. Like, it avoid avoid mm-hmm. that sure, at all costs. Can I be honest? Has gotten heavy rotation. That's what's up, man. We appreciate. It. Yes. Yep. Um. So what he was asking, what he can pray, how he can pray for us. Yeah, definitely pray for the church plant. Eh, I feel like I messed two <laughs> words up. Pray for the church plant. Mm-hmm. Um, and just uh, you know. God sustaining us while we're here. Um, you know, I've been working a lot. She's working, trying to get things off off the off the ground and stuff. So, I remember when I laid eyes on her. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, you, still, you be talking about this mystery woman. I don't know who she is. Um, I need to approve. It's like no. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. That definitely. Um. We. You know, Daryl's still wants to do music, but it's been really hard for him to find time to do that based on you know him working so much so i'm i have a, th- a lot of things in the works trish did you ever finish dinner i'm still eating still eating um have you had a moment before marriage where you were very very tempted oh yeah absolutely we we were we was all the way wrong like we was 
doing too much. Mm-hmm. So, like, we were... Yeah, we weren't having sex, but there was definitely some foreplay. Listen, and it was not okay. Like, it was leading... Definitely leading us to one wanting to actually do the act. And, I, like, right before we got married, like, about a couple of... Um, Rap. I rap. He's a rapper, yeah. A couple of uh, weeks before the wedding, like, I was like, no, we're not going to be alone at all. Mm-hmm. It was like a month, maybe. I was like, I can't. Like, first of all, I'm not putting myself in that situation. I just don't want to. Yeah. Even kissing sometimes gets exactly. That's why us. we we yeah, did not kiss for the first seven months of our relationship, which is like way not. I've never done that. Uh, I've never like not kissed my boo, right? But seven months in, we kissed, and it was even more of a wrap. Like we were like, oh, this just opened up a bunch of. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. Starts Quick question. Okay, that's kind of hard. Yeah, some people don't kiss up to to, to the altar. Yeah, we were. That was our plan. But yeah, that that didn't didn't work. <laughs> it just didn't work. Didn't happen. But we recommend people wait until they get married, until they're at the altar. Like, mm-hmm. please, is it okay to kiss the girl on her forehead? I mean, I mean I, yeah, that's cool with her. Yeah, if she's not. If that's not a temptation for her, then cool. Um, but yeah, so I was saying, um, humble brother that, um, there's a couple of things that, um, I have, I'm trying to launch. And then one thing that we're trying to launch together, um, this online course that we want to give to you guys. Um, we want to do a webinar, like a couple of webinar series that would lead up to the online course. Um, but really just want to kind of hear from you guys to see what, you know, specific things that we can talk about you know we want to cater to you guys amazon we're, google play itunes spotify Stephen wherever, the levite wherever you find music s-t-e-p-h-e-n the levite um his latest album is can i be honest <laughs> we talked a lot about what we're talking about mm-hmm. um a lot about our own relationship and the baggage that we had coming into marriage and just the lord really like um rocking our world and um and, um, and I, you know, he talks about some of the things that I went through being raped and molested and then just the, the issues of that affecting our marriage and then just kind of talking about how the Lord redeemed those things and how we're still working through it. So we have two of them. Yep. Two children. Five and four. About to be six and four. Mm-hmm. Our son's turning six on Thursday, which is crazy. Um, yeah. Love your kids. Aww. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you could pray for all of that, um, you know, I'm going to South by Southwest um, next month, which is crazy, and I don't have all the money yet to get there. So, so if you could pray that the Lord provide, that is next month. Um, and where y'all kids sleep? Yep, they have a bedtime. Pray for the hearts in the neighborhood where the church plan is. Absolutely, absolutely. Please do mm. that. We're in Bedside, which is you know. Um, very diverse. It's actually really, really diverse, but, um, you know, there's a lot of lost people and, um, we, I specifically have come in contact with a lot of unbelievers. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. A lot of unbelievers who are kind of in the, the same like creative space that we're in, um, which has been really dope to like build relationships with people. And, um, They've been, you know, just interested in our lives. They ask us why we're here. And then it's kind of like, you know, an introduction to the gospel. Because we're like, oh, yeah, we came to be a part of a church plant. So, you know, then they ask more questions. Like, what is that? And what does that look like? You know, so. Um, so, yeah, just please pray for, you know, just Brooklyn in general. Um, it's very, it's a lot of issues here. Racism, classism. Gentrification. Like gentrification is crazy. So I'm going to have to come out and labor with the other shoes. Oh, where are you from? Um, yeah, so, you know, pray for that and... Um